Hey folks, welcome back. So this week, we are hopefully going to be putting the finishing touches on the egg and wagon, our, uh, our portable chicken coop. And I think we've got three things left to do on this. The one is we need to put in some roost. Those are gonna go on this side. We need to put in some nest boxes, which are gonna go on that side. And then last, but certainly not least, we need a door and that's, well, that's gonna go right, right here where I'm sitting at the moment. So first off, we are gonna tackle the easiest of these and that is going to be putting the roost in. All right, so the next thing we're gonna work on is building a nest box. Now, I've tried several different designs over the last few years, and I just really haven't hit on one that I just really like. Uh, there's always something that's not quite the way I'd like it to be, or just doesn't quite work out the way I think it should. And so I'm, I'm kind of fiddling around with coming up with a new design here. I've already cut some of the stuff because I had to sort of think it through as I was cutting it, but I think I'm pretty much ready to start assembling this thing and getting it hung up on the wall. All right, so we're getting pretty well finished up with the nest boxes here. And what I need to do yet is I need to put a rim around the, uh, the edge of our nest boxes. And the way this works is it's a roll out or roll away nest box. So this bottom here is on a slight slope towards this side. So that way when a chicken lays an egg up here, it'll kind of roll down here out of the way. And that way as other hens are coming in and out of here, they aren't stepping on the other eggs and getting them dirty and breaking them and stuff like that. And then I've got a vinyl coated hardware cloth here. So that way dirt and stuff will just drop straight through. And if you get any manure on it, uh, the vinyl coating helps protect the hardware cloth uh, from the, uh, the corrosiveness of the chicken manure and helps keep this stay good longer. So like I said, we need to get a rim around the outside of here and then there'll be a little bit of a lid that'll go on top of there that helps to uh, protect the eggs. And then that'll be, I think, pretty much it for now. We'll just have to get it mounted on the wall. Now eventually, as you may have noticed, the ends come up well beyond uh, well beyond the uh, the nest box area and i'm hoping to use this as sort of an area to mount uh the the nest boxes from down the road and what i want to do is actually have them hanging so that way i can pivot them a little bit because since these work on 
uh, having a slope on them to roll the eggs downwards. As this chicken coop gets moved around the field, it may not be sloped in the right direction or it might be sloped too much in the right direction. So if this is hanging, uh, I'm not sure if I'll be able to get it balanced well enough so that it just kind of self-adjusts or whether I'll need to make just little adjustments and then kind of lock it in place somehow. But it'll give me that option if I need to down the road. But like I said, for now we're just gonna mount it on the wall. It'll be fine as it is. And then uh, this'll be a, a future upgrade. Alright, so the last thing that we have to do is to get a door built up here. I'm just going to keep it pretty simple and just kind of make a little frame uh, and then I'm going to fill it in with more of that quarter inch hardware cloth. That way again, get a little bit more ventilation through here. Uh, this winter, I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to do. I might come up with some sort of way to make it solid or add another door on here, but uh, we've got a few months to figure that part out. All right, so for attaching these things together, I'm gonna use this little uh, doodad right here. And this is a, a pocket screw, pocket hole something jig, which allows you to drill holes at a, a very, very steep angle into a board. And once you get those in there, you can drive a screw through there, which then will join two boards together. Now, I know I did a terrible job of explaining that, but you'll get to watch this and see how it works. Uh, it's, it's pretty cool and it does a really nice job of joining boards together. All right, so with the egg and wagon more or less done, we need to get this thing moved. It's kind of kind of in the way there. Uh, and for moving it, I can't, of course, back it up because it's it's taller than the, uh, the, the porch is or the, the bottom of the floor joist. Uh, and I can't exactly move it forward at the moment either. So 
I've got to get the manure spreader moved out of the way. Before I can move that, I actually need to take the uh, the apron off, the kind of the conveyor belt sort of thing off from here. Get that off of there. Once that's off, I can get that moved out of the way. Once that's moved out of the way, we can move this thing out of here. So as usual, it's not just a uh, simple thing of moving it. Uh, we gotta gotta add in a few extra steps there in order to get this done. Alright, so I've had a couple few of you asking, how am I going to be moving the egg and wagon around? Now, uh, eventually this is going to be getting moved all around the farm. Uh, it'll be getting rotated around behind cattle. Uh, the chickens do a great job of scratching through the cow manure, through the cow patties, spreading those around, pulling any, you know, worms and all that kind of stuff out of their fly larva. Uh, they love doing that sort of thing. So this is going to be moving all around the farm and obviously I need some way to move that around with. Now, the truck, which we're going to do a little experiment with here in a little bit, uh, the truck is only two-wheel drive. So I have some serious doubts about how well that's going to work. And in addition to that, with a wagon like this, all of the weight is on its own wheels. So where it connects on here with the tongue, there's no weight pushing down onto the rear wheels here. Now with a standard trailer, uh, you're gonna have tongue weight there. So you're just gonna have, say, a couple wheels in the middle, and then you're going to have weight pushing down on your bumper, or if it's a, a gooseneck, it'll be pushing down in the middle of your bed. And that gives you more traction on your rear wheels. But with something like this, you don't get that. So I don't think this is gonna work very well. Now you may have noticed I actually even put the uh, the chains on here just to give it a, a fighting chance, uh, but I, I'm not even sure that's gonna help. Now, once we get to moving around out in the other fields, uh, which hopefully will be sometime a little later this spring, early summer, almost undoubtedly going to be the, uh, the Massey Ferguson that we'll be using to move that around. I think that should be enough. Uh, the tractor tires, of course, are very aggressive. And in addition to that, there's actually fluid in them. So there's a lot of weight in those tires pushing down into the ground to give it traction. So that is probably what we're going to be using. Now, if at some point I've got them running around down here in this flat hay field here, maybe during the winter or something, uh, once, <clears throat> once I get Rusty, the, uh, the old Land Cruiser, uh, get that up and running, I might be able to use that here in the flat for moving it around. I don't know. May not even want to mess with using that for that, but because uh, of course that's four wheel drive. I'll get some good aggressive tires on there and it might work for moving it around here, but probably going to be the tractor. But anyways, we are going to give this a try, see if this even works. If it doesn't, we're going to have to take the disc off the tractor and hook that up and use that to move this. But I'll set you guys up here out of the way where you can see. And I have a feeling that once we get over here into a little bit of mud, we got half a rent half half a wrench half an inch of rain earlier I, I think once we get over here the truck is probably gonna start spinning and uh, we'll have to switch over <laughs>
Well, you know, I'm man enough to admit it when I'm wrong, and that actually pulled remarkably well. Uh, there was one spot over here where it was kind of pulling it up just a little bit of a grade, where it did start to spin, and then it caught, and it pulled it up just fine. And even pulling through that really muddy area over there where I'm spinning back and forth with the skid steer, it, it pulled right through there just fine. So. Uh, there, I'm still saying there's no chance that it's going to be pulling it up hills and stuff like that But here on the flat it, it actually did okay with the chains So with that done, I've got a few things that I need to pick up and it looks like we are about ready to get some uh, Some really good rain. I was just looking at my phone the uh, the radar on that and there's all sorts of pretty colors coming so I'm going to try getting some of this stuff picked up here, and I think this is going to be it for a day. Alrighty folks, that is going to do it for this video. As always, I appreciate you guys watching, and I will see you next time.